Hey guys, and welcome back to the shop. Today we're working on this vintage seagull outboard. Uh, the story on this one is it was sitting in a yard for some time, unknown history, doesn't pull over. It looks pretty complete, but that's about all we got. Let's figure out how to get this bracket attached and get her on the stand. These saddles look like they fit on this piece here. Just douse that thing. Okay, so that bolts through there. Let's get this out of here. That fits through the bracket. That looks right. I'll back you up, let's get in the stand. One of these days I'll get a real outboard stand, but this does really great for these small outboards. I've had up to a 15 horse on here, no problem. I'm gonna trim it up, pull that pin, then we can get a full range of motion on the steering. That's what it's like to bring this up and down at all, you have to pull this pin out. It's kind of cumbersome. Anything about getting this gas tank out of the way, it's barely hanging there anyway. That plug is not looking too healthy. At least the wire is intact. Right there. Like every bolt is gonna need some lubricant. Let's give ourselves a fighting chance here. Give it a little wire wheel. Yeah, like a, a banjo bolt. Oh, look at that. Not even tight. It's a cool setup. Easy. That's seven eighths. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm done. Yeah, that's chalky. Sure wasn't gonna spark. Completely bridged over and a little bit rusty. Let's see if our boroscope can tell us anything. Our piston is pretty high up in the bore. I think that is right there where it's meeting the cylinder wall. <laughs> Doesn't look great. That, that's about all we can see. Not a whole lot. Let's give it the spray either way. Why not? For whatever reason on the cylinder head here, it says don't remove. Tell me about that. What does that mean? I'll do what I want. How about, let's try to get this pull start cover off, see if there's a bolt we can give her a spin. Here's a flathead screw back here that appears to retain this top cap at that line, or clocks it, who knows. Right there is what I'm talking about. Wanna try to hit it with the impact driver? You know, now that I'm seeing it, I don't think this is gonna come off, I think it's that's just for the rotation. This locks it in like a set screw. To pull this assembly off, I think we've got to grab these four screws at the base. Let's do that. Seven sixteenths. Okay. Maybe we should pull those bolts out just for good measure. Yeah. Hey. So what now? Does that come off? Hey, hey, all right. You know what? I can get to the flywheel nut right here. Let's just leave this on. 24. It doesn't feel right, but feels better than that. Okay, we got a little bit. 
Just a tiny hair of movement. Let's tilt this up more and I'll get more uh, oil down that cylinder. I want to get it so that the, the penetrating lube can get to the top of the cylinder a little better because you know, it's just pooling down at the bottom. Tip it back and let her drink. Get that in there for backup. Yeah, works for me. Bottoms up. I'm wondering if what I was feeling earlier was just, just the bolt moving. I don't want to put a ton of tension into this. Given that crankshaft nut. So slim. And you guys see there's a little bit of motion on this ring, which makes me think the bottom end isn't stuck. It's all up here on the top. Just a hair of movement. Not a very robust looking nut. We're only bearing on that little surface. Maybe I'll flip it around. I'm just trying to install it with the fat, uh, flat face down so that we can get a good, good surface to bite on. There we go. I'm calling it on that technique. We're not gonna do anything that's not gonna screw it up. Let's get that cylinder head off. Void our warranty. Definitely does not feel good. Yeah, not good. That's what I thought. What now? Is that why they say do not remove? They know it's gonna get all rusty. Ooh, this thing is in bad shape. You know, I just, I don't feel like that penetrating oil is gonna do us any good in that combustion chamber. Boy, I think every one of these is gonna snap. I could torch them, but I think it's just kind of for our own entertainment at this point. Oh, you know what we could do? Let's pull the carburetor and look and see if we can find the, or check out the intake ports. Can we see anything? <laughs> I can't see much. But look at this. Those head bolts go all the way through to nuts down there. Should we get them from that side? Never seen that before. It's a good looking outboard. I mean, just, it's so freaking steampunk, you know, everything. It, it, it's so, it's like, it's medieval. Let's see if we can take that loose. That's a little oilier and, and less rusty looking than everything else. And a lot easier to get heat on if we need it. You know, I just realized, <laughs> why are we doing this on the bracket? Let's pull the motor off and set it on the bench. Flop her over. There's one of our culprits. But what is it? 7 sixteenths is like not there. I'm getting every wrench out of this project. None of them feels quite right. Okay, number two, you're up. Piece of cake. Last but not least. So does that get us any traction? Feels about the same. Yeah, it just feels like it's gonna break. And we're just hose clamped down there. Heck, let's pull that hose clamp off. See if that gets us anywhere. I don't think it is moving, just ever so slightly. Let's get an actual pry bar in there. <sighs> nope. Maybe we, um, maybe we can get that off and leave that intact. Might have enough room. moving the crank with it. So it might be it might be stroked out. 
As you recall, it's all the way at the top, as far as I can tell. The piston's all the way at the top, so we don't have a lot of wiggle room. I do want to get this exhaust out, but man, that is, it's really on there. What about pulling this, that lower unit back? How easy could that be? I'm guessing not very. Let's get that, and then there's one more here. Kind of see what we're up against. Then we can smoke that bolt from the opposite side. That's like something you could only get an open end on. Okay. Having the having to fight rust on every bolt is something I expected on this motor, but I sure wasn't expecting not having wrenches the right size. It's something I've never encountered. Yeah. A long one in front, short one in the back. He wants to go. I see a crack. Okay, it's locked onto the drive shaft. I'm wondering if that coupling has anything to do with it. I suppose taking the shift linkage apart wouldn't cause us any trouble. Feels pretty firm. I'm thinking the drive shaft needs to be decoupled somehow. How could the drive shaft possibly come undone if not through these windows though? Having a spline shaft seems a little advanced for something this old. I'm almost inclined to look it up. You know what we can do? Just take the shift rod off on the other side. There's a cotter pin. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely our drive shaft holding us up. Oh, there it goes. With how much this coupler nut doesn't want to move onto the shaft that way, I think that coupler is supposed to come with its little set screw buddy on the, uh, the shift rod that remains with the engine. I think I've done this the wrong way around. Okay, I think it's safe to say that's the way they want you to do it. Live and learn. Here it comes. Oh. That wasn't very fun. Kind of a cool design. I'm assuming that is the water impeller right there. It's plastic. There's hardly a lick of plastic anywhere on this machine. That plug is about all I see at a moment's glance, but plastic impeller. The gears do not feel terribly chewed up. Boy, there's a lot of backlash though, look at that. <laughs> what do we have remaining? I can see we're at the top of the stroke on the rod. So that's, that's what's holding us up right now. I don't know, anything else I can think about it involves splitting the crankcase, pulling that rod out. It all depends on how stuck that piston is in there. And it is feeling pretty stuck. I'm gonna take another look at getting this base plate off. But yeah, that's stuck. Come loose. Oh boy, I don't know if we have a whole lot of hope. Look how far that tube protrudes in there. Comes all the way through to the bottom. That's gonna be really tough. Can we get the, the two jaw on the case. Oof. 
Yes. Oh man. The bore on that thing. Ugh. And back to that cylinder. My gut is saying we need to take that cylinder head off first. As sucky as it is. I think we're to the point where I'm mostly just curious. <laughs> oh, this thing is maybe not worth the time. All right, you called the play. Are we breaking? Breaking. And what do we have? A tasty little cocktail of rust flakes. We'll get some wood on that and see if we can uh, push it out. Yeah, I don't know about this engine, guys. Boy, she is rusty. So guys, I think that's gonna be it for today. Maybe it for this engine. I'm not entirely sure. I gotta go in and have some lunch, think about it, do some research, and uh, you know, of course, just lick my wounds. I did have a lot of fun taking this apart. It was frustrating, but I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. And I wanna thank you guys for coming along the ride with me. So until next time, take care.